Okay, so the topic of this talk is to tell in a few words on how software testing in any software project happens. Of course, this is a bit of a vague topic since there's several different ways of conducting software projects like agile methods, plan driven activities and such. So in that sense, this will not give you a very detailed explanation on, on how the software testing happens, but more or less give you ideas on what's the daily tasks or the routine uh, the testing personnel or how testing work works on a software project. So, uh, so what does the normal testing person do in a normal software project? Uh, well, we have several experiences on working with software projects in an industry, so more or less there's always three roles. There's the test manager, the person responsible for managing the testing work, be it the project manager or separate test manager or quality manager or a scrum master or whoever, there's always the one who's administering the work or managing the projects. There's also the people who are doing the testing work, the testers themselves, and people who are doing development work. The developers also do some testing tasks themselves, but on this presentation, or short talk, I'm going to say that there's a separate testers, and so we have separate testers, people who are focusing on mainly on testing activities, people who are focusing mainly on development activities and test managers. Also, regardless of the size and scope and the domain of the project, there's always at least a couple of things for testers to use. These sort of sources of information. The test plan tells us how we should test our stuff, so it's basically the general guidelines or more detailed plans on how to do testing work, especially on this project. The test cases define what we should try out while doing the testing, uh, what we have tried before and what are the set of activities that we can use to ensure that everything works as intended. Finally, there's also the test report, which is more or less a summary on how things are, what was tested and how things happen. So basically three roles, three sources of information. So, what does the testing person do in a software project or how software testing in a nutshell is done? Well, there's, it's actually it's fairly simple 14-step program. First, the manager, developers and testers come up with a test plan and the first set of test cases based on the technical definitions to create the basis of testing work. So this means that since we have to have some form of idea on what we are doing, what the software product will be doing and on what platform it will be working and what, for example, programming language we will be using, we'll use this information to create our original set of test cases. Well, obviously, since this is only the starting point, the second step is that the developers start to create the new components and while doing, the fundam uh, while doing so, do the fundamental unit testing work on these set components. Meaning that they uh, check out that there's no missing syntax parts, there's the uh, fairly simple code uh, comprehension tests or code reviews or whatever they do to ensure that the code is at least reasonably bug free and that all the coding conventions and other things are followed. While uh, doing that and creating the wor of a first version of the components, of course the testers and developers are also adding new cases to the test set based on how the system is actually realized. So we know that there's a certain interfaces or that there's certain amount of methods or attributes associated to different modules. So how these modules are actually created, this adds to the test sets to ensure that the quality stays good and that the modules actually work. So, when there are components which are already past the unit testing phase, uh, the testers try out the components with the test cases, and if something doesn't work, they fill out the necessary paperwork. 
This gives the developers more insight into how well the component works and what sort of bugs we have in our pro system. So the developers add this information to the work list, uh, hopefully starting from the most critical, risk-related or essential, essential cases. And uh, they fix these found bugs while creating more new components. Uh, well, of course, every time the new component is made, it's integrated to the system build, and if there's problems, if the integration tests fail, the testers add new test cases, give more bug in, uh, information on bugs, and the developers go through the uh, most recent list, and so on and so on. So the cycle works. So after these first seven steps, we get into the point where we are going to have all the components done. Everything is at least on the version 1.0 or at least release candidate 1. So we get all the components and when they are integrated successfully to the build, we go forwards to the system testing. Since the system is now stable enough, we can test it as an entire system. So if we find something from the system testing phase, we add more cases and the, de the developers do their work while testing the, the testers do their work. When all the major problems are fixed, we can go to the acceptance testing. Of course, this is somewhat uh, optimistic view that can we find all the major problems in time and how can we find them and how can we ensure that we found all the problems, but let's not go there here. So let's just say that when we have all the components and they are integrated, we go to systems testing system testing. When all the major problems are fixed, we go to acceptance testing and in acceptance testing, if we still find problems, we of course may add new cases and fix those problems. So, finally, when the customer, approver or client or whoever, uh, internal client or internal manager or whoever, a CEO approves that, okay, now this is good enough, then we are done with our project. We make the final test report, archive the test cases, the test environment data and other relevant parts of the project for upkeep and also to use in maintenance and follow-up projects. At this point, if we have to make some updates, additions or fixes, we conduct them as mini-projects and we, in any case we use the test cases defined in the earlier parts here, in the part 1, or step 1 here, or step uh, 7 here, or step 3, or in any step here, we use those test cases as regression test sets to ensure that we don't accidentally uh, reintroduce some problem which we already managed to fix once. So, there you have it. Uh, 13 uh, simple steps uh, which ensure, well, well, not ensure, but which describe how testing and development are combined in a generic or in general in a software development project.